Hello fire engineers and welcome back to the fire alarm system training course provided by the platform of fire engineering with me Mohammed Al Hamad. We have covered in lecture one and two uh, uh, more on as an introduction to the fire alarm system as well components of the fire alarm system and today we start by exploring more about the initiating devices of the fire alarm system. Before we, we, we jump on the initiating just a, a reminder on the uh, the, the components of the fire alarm system, what we covered and what we will be covering more in the next lecture. So today we are talking about the initiating devices mainly. So uh, as initiating devices, the various type of initiating devices that can be incorporated into the fire detection and alarm system are mainly categorized as automatic and manual alarm devices. If, if we look into the automatic devices, what we have, we have the spot type. Everybody know it's a famous as a smoke or heat, uh, multi-sensor, all as, as categorized as automatic type of detectors, smoke, heat, or multi-sensor. As well, we have the supervisor detectors, air sampling, other type like beam detector, um, line heat detection, uh, gas, radiant. We'll be covering a lot in the next lectures. And as well, manual call point, pull station, break glass, all as categorized as a manual type of the initiating devices. So. What we explained previously in the in lecture two that the initiating devices consider as the input to the fire alarm control panel. If we come here to this the, the photos and um, I ask you as a breaking glass or this is as as a, a call point, what is the type? Is it initiating or notification devices? Yes, it's it, it's considered as an input input, so it's initiating. As well, the smoke detector type. It's initiating devices. What else? Sound. Sound that it's give us a notification in case of a fire. So it's not initiating. It is notification devices. Okay. So uh, when we talk here, what is this kind of device? It's a beam detector, transmitter and receiver. It's as initiating devices. As well, supervisory, timber switch or flow switch, we can consider it as well as initiating devices. For here, lastly, we have a flasher, audio, audio visual device as well, sounder with the flasher. So it's considered as a notification devices this is important to know firstly the device type so we can move to into the next slide to know more about the initiating device we start with the first type of the initiating devices the smoke detector smoke detector the smoke detector here is not meaning only the spot, spot type uh, model no we are talking about different types of smoke detection we will look into that right now this course is sponsored by kiwi gift store Kiwi Gift Store is an online gift shop on Instagram provide unique gifts as personalized and customized memories in a framed photo collab. Kiwi Gift Store, where every gift tells a story. Place your order. Use discount code of Mohammed20 and benefit from 20% discount for the platform of Fire Engineering followers. Before we start, just remember, while you start designing the fire alarm system, there is a lot of consideration to select the type, a suitable type of smoke detection or fire alarm system, depending on, as we say, occupancy, ceiling shape, ventilation, ambient environment. Also, if there is a, a gas uh, characteristics in the, in, the, in the area where we are designing, as well, um, let me say, the height of the ceiling as well can affect the type of smoke detection. Since we are talking now on the smoke detection type, this is the main types of smoke detection. As I said, it's not uh, limited to spot type. We have a spot type, we have an aspiration air sampling type, we have a beam detector, also it's considered as a smoke detector, but it's a special type of the smoke detection. Video type of smoke detector. So as main categories you may you hear in the market about the ionization type, of a smoke detector or photoelectric smoke detectors type optical smoke right now these days we hear in ue only about the photoelectric why because simply the ionization type is banned in the ue and in a lot of countries why we'll come to know in the next slide we'll know more about the ionization and photoelectric smoke detector type so talking about the ionization type of smoke detector as we say it's banned in ue and many other country why the reason because it have a small amount of radioactive element of or material between electrically charged blades or electrode electrode as a positive and negative ionizes the air and cause current to flow between the blades so when the smoke particles enters the chamber it disrupts the flow of ions reducing the flow of current and activating the alarm so whenever there is a smoke enter the chamber here okay it will be disrupting the flow of the ions and reducing the flow of current, activating the fire alarm. This type of ionization type smoke detector was 
used previously and as we say now it's banned in the UAE so we're talking about the photoelectric type which now mostly of all of the devices are manufacturing using this kind of sensing technology it operates using the light scattering principle and contains a light source LED and a light sensor placed inside the chamber so light source and light sensor generating a light beam in the chamber so when the smoke particles enter the light path the light strikes the particles and it's scattered into the photosensitive device causing the detector to respond so simply this is based on the led light or a beam light between the light source and light sensor so guys whenever you design the fire alarm system or you review the fire alarm system we need to consider the photoelectric smoke detector type as we say it operates using the light scattering principle and contains a light source and light sensor placed inside the chamber I hope it's clear for you guys so we move to the next slide and i have a quick tip on the fire alarm addressable system you hear uh, you while you are working about hard addressing and soft addressing so there are two two main types to address the fire alarm devices as we say it's addressable system and each device will get an address and uh, as well in, at the programming stage or during the maintenance we will be facing a situation where you need to, to replace the device and addressing it with a new address so you will find some brands working on the methodology of hard addressing that you will find binary number or dip switch on, on the on the detector base while another model of or or, or another uh, brands of the fire alarm using a soft addressing by like handheld programming tool or or as well computer directly by as a software programming keep in mind the general requirements for smoke detectors and this is based on the ue fire light safety code of practice 2018 in table 8.1 as we say we are covering in this course, chapter eight of the UE Fire Life Safety Code, and this is talking about the initiating devices. All kind of detectors shall be approved and listed by civil defense. Now, wh whenever you have a problem or, or a situation that there will be a, the device is, is subject to mechanical damage, the device shall be protected by a guard. As a general practice, the device shall be installed or mounting on the on the surface or on the ceiling. But in some cases, the device can be resist inside the ceiling, but the device shall be listed and tested for this purpose of installation. As well, lastly, about the maintenance, the fire alarm smoke detector types shall be installed in an accessible location. So to provide for the inspection, testing and maintenance with a clear and easy access to the devices. So the question where to install the smoke detectors? Shall we install it in, 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 in um, kitchens? Shall we install it in bedrooms? Shall we install it in corridors? Here we are talking about the area or the locations, not the distances between the devices. So the smoke detectors, if it's required in all room or no, my answer for sure, yes. In which hazard or building shall we provide the smoke detection system? And what about the requirements of bedroom and kitchens? The answer is easy. Simply in all buildings, in all rooms, we shall provide a smoke detection. So in referring to the UE Fire Life Safety Code of Practice, Chapter 8, every building shall be provided with an addressable fire alarm detection system. As well, every building, enclosed structure, enclosed equipable spaces, and building under construction as well shall be provided with a smoke detection system or fire alarm system. Now, about the detector coverage, it shall include all rooms, halls, storage areas, basements, and for every enclosed usable spaces shall be provided with a smoke detector. So whenever we start designing the system, we need to look into the layout of the, of the building and start designing based on, as we say, considering all rooms to be protected with fire alarm. About the distances and the spacing between the detectors, for sure, will be covered soon in the next slide. So stay tuned for more lectures by the platform. Additional cases where we need or we, where the smoke detectors are required to be provided. The first one which we are reviewing now is the staircases, the stairs. So at least one smoke detector shall be provided at the top of the stair of an high rise building. So this is as per the la latest update by the Civil Defense Code 2018. In the staircases, we shall have a smoke detector at the top of the stair. This is for the non high rise building. In high rise and super high rise buildings, along with one smoke detector at the top of the stair, a smoke detector or multiple smoke detectors shall be provided every 23 meters at the intermediate landings of the staircases. We'll have example guys in the next slide to explain more. About the elevator shaft and additional cases where we need to provide a smoke detector, we need to provide at least one smoke detector at the top of the elevator shaft of a non high rise building to initiate elevator recall. So as you note in this, in this uh, layout, 
out, we have a, a smoke detector at the top of the uh, elevator shaft. Now, in the high-rise and super high-rise buildings, along with one smoke detector at the top, we need to add a multiple smoke detectors as well in the intermediate levels every 23 meters. So keep in mind, 23 meters as a number shall be provided as a distance shall be provide a smoke detector for the high-rise building. In this example, you can see this building considered as a mid-rise building. Mid-rise building. As per the UEFA Life Safety Code of Practice, we shall have one smoke detector at the top of the staircase, and here it's provided. Where this uh, example, the high-rise building shall be provided one at the top, and every 23 meter, and the intermediate landing, same landing of the door, we shall provide a smoke detector. So every 23 meter, we shall provide a smoke detector. Hope that the, the, the smoke detector location, as we say, it's it's easy. We provide, as we say, in every uh, room, in all locations. Uh, in all halls, in all stores, basement, if, if it's not protected by sprinklers. As well, we have additional cases like in the stairs, elevator. And, and let us take also additional case about the partitions. Now, normally, if you have a, 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 an office room or an, a room provided with a partition, meaning that the wall is not closed and it's not a, a separate room. So we have room number one here, uh, separated by a partition. And this is number, uh, and this is room number two. So. I'm referring to the NFBA 72 and as well the UE Fire Life Safety Code, which is provide the same details. So, where partitions extend to within 15% of the ceiling height, the spaces separated by the partitions shall be considered as a separate room. So, when we consider it as, as a, a separate room or, or consider all area as a one room, so provided one, one smoke detector. Now, let, let's take, take this example. Room height is a 3 meters and the partition height is 2.4 meters. Shall, shall we provide a smoke detector in each room or no? How we consider? How, how we, we find that? We, we, we refer to the rules by the NFBA or UAE Fire Life Safety Code about 15%. So, by doing this Simple calculation that three meter minus the partition height dividing by the total ceiling height we get that the the, the partition is extended up to more than 20 percent of the ceiling height then the smoke detector is not required and the space is considered as one room so we come here we provide a smoke detector here or here based on the spacing requirement which we'll be covering soon in the next lectures example number two a room height is 2.8 meters and the partition height is 2.6 shall we provide smoke detector or no is it considered as a one room or or an, a separate room individual room so by doing the calculation that's total ceiling height minus the partition height dividing on the total ceiling height we get that seven percent of the partition is extended to the, the to distance only about seven percent then the smoke detector shall be provided in each room space so since we say we divide and we get here distance is up to only seven percent so we provide a smoke detector here and we provide as well a smoke detector here guys this is based on the smoke movement which which maybe will will, will not be easy to move to the next smoke detector based on the you know um, distance between here and here so the nfba rule is to provide each smoke detector in each room in each partition if the um, partition height extends to 15% uh, of the ceiling height if, if more is then we consider all area as a one room or one space let's try again examine a smoke detector distribution in the partition area we have room number one room number two three four five where to place the smoke detector as you can see now the smoke detector here in room number one is required since the room is enclosed area as per the ue fire life safety code this area is closed and for sure we'll have a door for this room so this room will provide it with with the consider as an individual space or or a separate area now for this area the ceiling height is three meter and we have a room here 2.8 2.4 2.4 now by doing the calculation 3 meter minus 2.8 dividing under the total height percent should be less than 15 percent then this area considered as a separate room now for sure 2.4 minus uh, 3 meter minus 2.4 and dividing by 3 meter we will have as a percentage more than 15 percent then we'll consider all area as a one space now how to divide the smoke detector based on the spacing requirement the spacing requirement will be covering soon in the cover in the next slides uh, and next lectures but here let me say that as it's one room we will come to know that about more about the spacing but generally the spacing between smoke detector shall be nine meter so we'll have here one smoke detector and another another smoke detector so why we did not provide it in each room because based on the calculation this area considered as one space and this room considered as uh, as a separated area this one separated area so this is this is the way how to design 
uh, office or areas prov provided with a partition. So we reached to the end of uh, today's lecture. Uh, engineers, I hope you get uh, benefits from today's lecture. Uh, as I say, we'll cover more about the spacing of the smoke detector. Thank you for watching. Keep tuned for the next lecture by the platform and see you soon.